The next day here with the Alice Chalmers, the WD-45. I cannot get this thing to start with the standard pull ignition. So I'm gonna try to turn it over by hand, see if it'll work. It might not work, but it also might work. This crank start on the front has not been used probably ever. I don't think he's ever used. I'm pretty sure I asked him once and I said, have you ever used a manual crank on this? And this was back when I filmed my last video with him in the spring. And he said, I've never used that. He said, but it's supposed to work. So, um, cause we couldn't get it started. So we ended up just pulling it down the hill and he jump started it that way. But we're gonna see if this works. It's, I don't know if it's ever been used um, by him, but we'll see. I'm gonna lubricate this shaft up a little bit here. Make sure she's in neutral first. Okay. Part of me thinks it could just be a weak battery now because they put the charger on it for a little bit and then it and then it attempted to turn over a little bit um you can see here like like it attempted a little bit we got it started i had the charger on it only for about 35 minutes and it gave it just enough juice to fire so i'm gonna try to run it just a little bit that way hopefully it'll start up fine the next time but we'll see i'm at least glad to know that it was nothing major nothing too complicated and it took care of itself with the charger but i'm trying to figure out if it's still going to sputter out and kill itself like it was back at my grandpa's farm and so far it hasn't but you know we'll find out under a little bit of a load with the pto on we might find out if it's having troubles under a little bit of load or not kind of big hills or tall brush to really put this thing under a load i mean this thing could pull a three bottom plow through the through the dirt you know what i mean just fine so i mean i don't know if this is going to be able to put it under enough of a load to sputter out like it was so we might just have to dig into it and rebuild the carburetor and the float and all that stuff just to be sure anyway yeah it's just there's just not enough ground here to really strain it. It did that thing finally. Hear it? Hear that? notice how it's only doing it when I go up 
I'm slightly uphill in third gear because I'm kind of bogging it and working it a little bit more. It's not as bad going downhill a little bit. We start to go uphill, watch. It does it again. So I did about an hour of running on the old Alice Chalmers here, the WD-45. Didn't really act up at all until I was like, you know what, I'm gonna see if, if I bog it in third gear, because what I was doing was completely unnecessary for third gear, like it did it just fine still. Um, but I'm like, if I do third gear, just dragging that little thing around with some weight on it, I'm like, it might, it might bog it just enough to make it seem like it's under a load and then see if it's gonna sputter or just like lug out and it did exactly what i thought it would do if it felt like it was under a little bit of a load and it went you know pup, 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 pup. and then when i went downhill a little bit since it wasn't really working downhill totally fine smooth as butter going uphill a little bit pup, 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 pup. you know did the same thing again first or second gear didn't do anything not around here with there's just not enough elevation change and there's just not a tall enough weeds i do think that the float in the carburetor is bad but my guess would be that it would make the most sense to just rebuild everything in the carburetor just in case that's not the only thing i'm guessing it has something to do with the carburetor itself and something inside of it but on another note if you want to get entered to win this beautiful 97 12 valve cummins plus five thousand dollars cash this is your last day for 20x entries for everything on the store except for mystery boxes so if you want to get 20x entries for all other items on the store this is your last day to get those and then they will be gone and it will be going down to 1x entry tomorrow so take advantage of it while you can best of luck to you guys so we're here under the hood of the flat nasty and um when i drove the truck for the first time i thought this thing spools way different than an hx35 and i thought for me personally um, when you put your foot down, I thought it spooled up pretty darn good, but it felt like it made a lot more boost pressure a lot faster, maybe it was just me, than a stock HX35, which is known to spool pretty stinking quick. And I'm looking out of the hood of this truck, and it is not a factory turbo. I don't know exactly what it is. I can tell you what I found online based on the numbers on the face of the turbo, um, turbine housing that I looked up and it comes back as a caterpillar turbo i've never seen this before um it looks it looks to be like it looks very close to stock but i'll show you the main differences here so when you look at the back of the exhaust housing here what you'll notice is the exhaust exit is way different there's not like a little turbo flange that mounts up to the back here that bolts on then you bolt your exhaust to that little flange that turns down it's actually He's got a four inch exhaust mounted directly to the back that's not built down at all. It's just straight four inch to the back. And then once it gets down to about the transmission, it goes from a four to a five inch. And then in terms of the actual exhaust housing itself, the exhaust housing appears to be a little bit smaller. Maybe that's just me. Um, it appears to be slightly smaller than an HX35, which might be why I feel like it spools so much quicker. But the turbine housing itself looks quite a bit bigger and I don't know if that's just me or if you know I haven't seen a stock HX35 up close in a little while I know Nasty Reds is sitting over there so maybe we'll go compare that to this but it's got the number 05P right up over there and then down low it's got numbers 669501-F I don't know what that means but when I type in those numbers online it comes up as a Caterpillar turbo for a cat engine I'm not exactly sure what it comes off of originally, <laughs> um, but I mean, it sounds amazing. You know, maybe that's just me. If you saw the video of me driving it after the first day, I think I picked it up. I, I mean, you hear that turbo, it screams and it has all the firewall proofing, soundproofing and stuff on the engine bay still. So, I mean, I mean, you hear it scream. So, I mean, it sounds really cool. I don't know uh, what the main big benefits or differences are in having that over an HX35 or an HX40 or something like that. You know, something that comes on a Cummins engine, but for some reason the guy liked it. And, you know, when I was driving it at first, my first thoughts were, this thing spools super nice. I'm like, it gets up and moves. Like, it moves its weight very nicely. And so I'm thinking he must have upgraded injectors, turbo, a couple of other things. And I'm like, it, it drives really, really good. I guess that's part of the answer. I don't know the rest of it because he said that since he's had the truck, he hasn't done any 
power upgrades to it. I don't know, you know, who owned it before him. I thought he said a buddy of his or a friend of his owned it before he did. Kind of interesting, kind of cool. Um, I don't know much about these turbos, but he's got it up under the hood of this thing. And I mean, it runs and drives and it sounds really cool. And it, I think it spools very nicely. Now this trick here is far from stock, but I want to show you guys the turbo housing on the HX35, the turbine housing, and you can't really see the exhaust housing, um, but the exhaust housing seems to be a little bit bigger than that other one, but the turbine housing seems to be a lot smaller than that other turbo. And you can see, obviously, this one says whole set on it, and it doesn't say anything like that other turbo does in the front of it. So definitely a different turbo. Not sure on what all the specs are of that thing. I'm gonna have to do some research because I'd be interested in knowing what kind of an upgrade or downgrade that turbo is. It seems, it feels like a lot more of an upgrade compared to a stock 12 valve uh, turbo, but you know, without knowing all the details, it could just be my feelings and what I'm hearing more than anything in terms of actual increased power output or spooling or whatever. So. But yeah, that's kind of interesting. Now, I wish we could do some driving with this truck right now or something similar, but the truck currently has no seats in it. And so it's a little bit complicated to drive and very unsafe. I want to talk about something with my grandpa's truck here too, because truck's been running great. I've already put over 2,500 miles on this truck in the last three and a half weeks that I've owned it. I put a lot of miles on it. Probably the most driven vehicle on our fleet right now is this truck. And there's people that are like, why are you driving it so much? Why are you driving it so much? Aren't you worried about wearing it out and having to replace the motor or wearing out the transmission? Or I'm not worried about it. And as much as some people might be like, oh, well, that's the original engine and transmission that it had in it. You know, like, you know, you should take care of it. Obviously, we're going to take care of it. I'm going to do maintenance, you know, stuff on it and keep up with it but i want to drive the truck i like driving this truck it's honestly super comfortable it rides really nice compared to like that which rides fine but like in terms of a daily comfort oriented vehicle the 1500 just it offers more of a soft ride and it's a lot quieter it's not very it's not loud at all because it's got a muffler on the exhaust and so it's just a comfortable daily drivable vehicle but it started making a ticking sound two or three days ago now and I'm not a fan of that it's very very faint but it's there and to me it sounds like a manifold leak like an exhaust manifold gasket may have cracked or something along the lines of that but I'll show you what I'm talking about here and you guys can let me know if you think that's what it is or if you guys think it's something more severe that I should take care of right away but let's get it started up and show you so it has not been started yet today You can hear it already. It's very, like I said, it's very faint. It's not like, it doesn't sound horrible. There you can hear it. The tick, 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 tick. Now, am I the only one that think that sounds like a manifold gasket leak or is or is that just me or is it something way worse? It could be something totally different. What do you guys think? And now we've got some new Anthem wheels. I'm not going to show you them completely out of the wrapping and on the truck yet, but hopefully Friday in Friday's video you guys can see these things on that truck that's my hopes is it going to be able to happen I don't know but I'm hoping that it'll be able to happen and that we can get the wheels pulled off that truck and get these new ones put on in I think it's going to look good it's not a look we've ever done before it's something completely different than what we've ever had on one of our trucks I'm okay with trying new things it's a new thing that we've never tried on one of our trucks before I think this is gonna look sweet on this truck this is what I picked out it's really cool to work with them on this kind of stuff because they're just super personable they've been a real pleasure to work with and I absolutely love it definitely check them out anthemwheels.com there's always a link in the description below to check out their website and check out what they have to offer in terms of wheels and I believe they sell some suspension and some tires on their website as well. So definitely go check them out, guys. Anyways, these are the new wheels. I will do a full reveal in the next video when I can actually get them on the truck. Because if I can't get them on the truck today, which I can't because 
the wheel and tire shop that I get a mounter and balance that's about to close already and I would have to pull them off the other truck and get them hauled over and just a little short on time now hopefully on Friday these will be on the truck and you guys will see the video and uh, you guys will be able to let me know what you think I'm I'm pretty excited about it and for everybody asking when are we gonna have a winner for this truck the 0359 literally it could be any day now entries are with the administration that does the drawing it's a non-biased legal drawing and it takes time doing things the right way so like always at seven to 14 days after the last day of that giveaway is usually when we have a winner so it could be any day now it's been almost a week so just stay tuned and uh yeah patiently wait any day now guys hopefully you enjoyed the video of the alice chalmers we're gonna get some uh, parts ordered to rebuild that carburetor and put a new float in there so that hopefully we don't have any more sputtering and if that does not fix it well we're gonna be out a little over 100 bucks but worst case scenario we just have to diagnose a little bit more and fix whatever it is so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you did smash that thumbs up don't forget to enter to win our current giveaway truck at lmpgear.com because it is your last few moments for 20x entries before they will be gone and it is going down to 1x entry so get in while you can thanks so much guys peace out